Hey everybody, this is Burke, and I wanted to talk to you today about pipes in Angular 2 and how we can use them with NativeScript. So if we look at our to-do app here, we've got three items and a segmented bar at the bottom that's supposed to filter these items out. Uh, and Angular 2 will actually do this on collections via something called pipes. So here when we click done, we shouldn't see this, uh, th sorry, this first item, or this third item, and then active, we should only see the active items, and then all, we'd, we'd see them all. So in order to do this, though, we're going to have to create a custom pipe. So Angular supports some very basic ones like uppercase. Um, these won't work here because to do is an object and you can't make an object uppercase or JSON, uh, some formatting pipes. But what we want to do is filter this collection based on whether or not the item is completed. So I've actually already got this pipe completed. I'm going to put it in here and I'll explain how it works. So we have a completed pipe here. It's called completed and then basically it's just saying um, filter based on whatever this value completed filter is which is on the to-do store and we'll work through all of this so if we go over and we look at the pipe I just I think I called it completed pipe let's look at that for a second so in order for this to work in angular 2 for a custom pipe you have to implement this pipe transform here and then when you do that you have to have a transform method and you can see that the value that I'm passing is an array of to-dos and then the second thing that it's looking for that is the an array of parameters in my case I'm just passing a completed flag and it's saying if completed is undefined then just return every single value uh, in other words where if it's undefined then we want to see all of them otherwise filter out and give me back only the items where the completed status, which is a Boolean true or false, is equal to the completed that got passed in here to this function. So the syntax looks a little confusing. It's okay, it was for me as well. Um, so what this is doing is obviously filtering out the list. Now, the problem here is that we need to get the status from this bar here, which is firing an event, to update some sort of variable on the to-do store so that this completed pipe knows what completed status to filter against. All right, so this is what we're gonna work through today. I'm gonna go into the filter component that I created, and we'll look at it for just a second. If this is the filter component, it, it creates a segmented bar it uh, pulls in some filter actions, and then the selected index changed is a native script event on the segmented bar. And when that happens, I'm calling filter completed, which is a function on this filter component. And I'm basically saying for the filter actions, get me the one for the selected index. So if we jump over to the filter component and have a look, you see this filter completed method? That's the method that's going to get called when the selected index on the segmented bar changes. And when it changes, it's going to get passed in one of these objects here um, by the event. So that's what's going to come in here. So let's go ahead and start working through how we need to implement this. I've stubbed the method out, but it doesn't work. So I'm going to go and I tell you what, let's, let's pull this out here and let's start with... Um, see here all right so I've added the filter completed method here which is being called from filter.html filter completed right there um, and then once that we're inside of that method you'll notice that there's this this dot filter change dot emit which looks a little bit weird right now um, in order to what well, we, we don't want to couple this component tightly to the rest of the application so instead of calling an event directly on the to-do store we just want to emit an event and then let the to-do store listen for that emitted event and so to do that, we actually need an output here um, on our filter component. So let's add that in here. So there's our output, and it's basically a new event emitter. And you can see now the, the TypeScript's OK. And we're emitting an event, and we're saying that when, um, and actually what we want to do is uh, filter.value. The filter is this one of these items here. So whenever that selected index uh, is changed, it's going to fire this event and it's going to pass in whichever one of these items is associated with that specific segmented bar item. And so what we want to do is emit this event here that say, okay, it says, okay, a filter has been selected and this is the value that we want to pass. So if you remember, null gives us all items, false gives us items that have not been completed, and true gives us items that have been completed. Okay, so now that we've done this, we need to um, consume this event from somewhere in the application component so that we can actually use this in the template. So let's go back here to our um, app.html. 
And what we need to do, because we're looking for a completed filter on the to-do store, is actually add a completed filter there. So I'm gonna go over to the store uh, to-do, and we're just gonna add a, um, let's see here. We'll just do, I'll tell you what, just do completed filter. Uh, it's a type of Boolean. And by default, we're gonna set it to null. And what we wanna do is just change this value whenever that segmented bar changes, because it's, it's um, actually emitting an event. So to do that, let's go back to the app.html. And I'm gonna come down here to this filter, and you'll see this filter here in a minute, it's right there. So what we wanna do is add the event here. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. So in order to um, bind to the right method here, we need to go back to our filter component and figure out what we called it. We called it filter change. So if we come back to app.html, we can say filter, actually, we want filter change. And then we can bind that to an actual event that's just on the app component. So we can say completed filter change, and then we're gonna get an event passed in because that's what Angular is going to give us from the event emitter. And now we just need to implement this filter change event on our app component. So let's come over to the app component. All right, so then we just need to add our completed filter change here. And it's gonna receive an event, um, which we'll just call type any for now. We'll just keep it as type any for now, and then we'll say this dot to do store, and then um, we'll say completed filter, and then we'll just set equal to event dot value. So what's happening here? If we go back through and, and look at all the different things that are taking place, the segmented bar uh, fires an event, a selected index changed, and when it does that, the uh, footer component then emits an event, and that event contains a value which contains the actual completed status that we want to look at. When that happens, this function is fired because this completed filter change is actually listening for that event. It's subscribed to it, if you will. And then we're actually setting it on the to-do store. That will then trigger the pipe to refilter the list. It's a lot of different steps here, but what this does is it allows us to keep our components completely decoupled from one another by using events instead of just directly referencing some function on a component from another component. So having done that, let's jump over and look at our application. We have our application here, and if I click on active, you'll see we just get the active items. If we click on done, just the done items, and if I add a new item, you'll see it doesn't show up there, but it automatically shows up here, and if I click it, then it automatically filters. So you can see how powerful this pipe is once we actually get this thing wired up and working. So this is a whirlwind intro to pipes in Angular 2. Um, and we also threw in event emitters in there as well, as, we're, as well as outputs and um, how to keep our components decoupled and still let them talk to each other. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. The uh, code for this will be available in the GitHub repo. I'll put that in the video comments. Enjoy.